Three major bones create a very important part of the human body, the pelvic girdle. The pelvic girdle is a primary component of the hip joint, which is important for movement and, because of the pubis, is a region that expands slightly to make childbirth possible. The pubis has a flexible joint, the pubic symphysis, which is able to widen in order to make room to allow the baby to pass through the pelvic region during childbirth. When looking at the pelvic girdle, one may not be able to tell that there are three separate bones located here. The pubis, the anterior portion of the pelvis, is one of those three separate bones. When the pelvis is fully articulated, the pubis resembles an X and will be the focus of this video. This video will cover nine parts that make up the pubic bone. These structures are the superior ramus, inferior ramus, pubic tubercle, obturator foramen, acetabulum, pubic arch, pubic crest, articular surface of the pubis, and the pubic symphysis. This video will now focus on those structures in greater detail. The superior ramus can be found by first locating the pubic body, which is the medial aspect of the pubis. The superior ramus is a process which extends from the body of the pubis posteriorly and laterally. Since there are two rami, the superior ramus is the most superior of the two. The superior ramus also makes up a part of the pubic crest. The pubic crest is located on the medial anterior aspect of the pubis, where the two superior rami articulate. Below the superior ramus is the inferior ramus. The inferior ramus is another long process that extends from the pubic body laterally and inferiorly at an angle. The pubic arc is the angle that is formed between the two inferior rami. It is located inferior and medial to the inferior rami and can be seen when the inferior rami are articulated. Above the inferior ramus is a small bump which is the pubic tubercle. The pubic tubercle located on the medial and anterior aspect of the superior ramus is a small projection for muscle attachment. Many muscles of the abdomen, as well as thigh muscles, attach to the tubercle and some attach to the inguinal ligament. The inguinal ligament extends from the superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. It is fibrous connective tissue which attaches muscle to bone. It also reinforces the muscles, nerves, and blood vessels, which all lead from the abdomen to the thigh. Some of these muscles that attach to the inguinal ligament are the sartorius, pectineus, and adductor longus. The muscles that attach to the pubic tubercle are the internal oblique, external oblique, transversus abdominis, gracilis, and the adductor magnus. Moving inferiorly between the two rami, there is a large round hole in the pubis, the obturator foramen. This large hole serves as a passageway for some nerves and blood vessels, including the obturator nerve, obturator artery, 
and obturator vein. In the hip and the thigh, the obturator nerve is responsible for motor function and feeling sensory information from the skin. The obturator artery supplies blood and nutrients to the upper thigh and the obturator vein collects the blood from the upper thigh. Next to the obturator foramen, laterally and posteriorly, is a large fossa formed by all three bones of the pelvis. This large fossa is known as the acetabulum. The acetabulum is the site where the femur articulates with all three pelvic bones to form the hip joint. Moving to the medial aspect of the pubis bone is the pubic arch. The pubic arch is located inferiorly and medially where the two pubic bones and the inferior rami articulate. The subpubic angle is the angle that is formed by the articulated ends of the inferior rami. The subpubic angle ranges in degree depending on gender. How large or small the subpubic angle will be differs from person to person. The male and female subpubic angles are known to be different based on gender. The female pubic arch has a greater angle, approximately 90 degrees. In contrast, the male pubic arc is smaller than 90 degrees, more around 50 degrees. The female's pubic arc is larger for childbirth. The subpubic angle must be large enough to accommodate for the baby's head to pass. The pubic crest is the superior border of the pubic body and is located superior to the pubic arch. The pubis and the superior rami together make this medial anterior edge. The pubic crest stretches along the top of the pubic body in between the two pubic tubercles. The pubic crest is wider and longer in females, whereas in males, it is smaller and more pointed. The more rounded the female pubic arc allows for more room while the baby passes through this section. The pubic symphysis is the joint where the two pubis bones articulate. This joint is located medially between the pubic arc and the pubic crest. The two surfaces that are connected here are the articular surfaces. This joint is classified functionally as amphiarthrosis, meaning that it is slightly movable. It is structurally cartilaginous, made from fibrocartilage, which is the strongest of the cartilage. It cushions the bones while allowing slight mobility. During childbirth, the baby passes through the pelvis, pushing against the pubis bone. The pubic symphysis allows a small amount of movement facilitating childbirth. The pubis is one of the three bones that make up the pelvic girdle. The way that the pubis differs in size of the subpubic angle, based on gender, allows the baby to pass through the pubis during childbirth. As shown in this video, the pubis plays an important role in childbirth, as well as having processes for muscle attachment.